Hello, it's the Great Canadian Bagel here, coming to you with another episode of the Path to Victory series, this time discussing Atlantic Canada. <clears throat> now, Atlantic Canada is actually kind of an interesting sub-region of Canada. It has leaned, for the last maybe 20 years, fairly liberal. But there is... But it's kind of an outlier in that. A lot of the underlying demographics of this region, the demographic, like, the demographic makeup itself, usually would lend itself to right-wing politics. Notably, it's an old region, and generally speaking, older people are more right-wing. But here, in Atlantic Canada, that's the opposite, actually. The older population is generally more liberal. Not necessarily left-wing, but most certainly not right-wing. <clears throat> so we have this interesting dynamic going on. Well, the other thing is some of these parts of Atlantic Canada, such as Newfoundland, have pretty abysmal turnout rates. So while on paper, if we go here to the data... Oh, this is Newfoundland. I just labeled it wrong. There we go. If we look at Newfoundland on paper, make this a little bigger, we see here that on average, it's 70% left of center votes. Sometimes 2008, 2015, in the high 80s. This is a vote pattern that is very similar to a very urban core. You might see something like this in a Scarborough. It's quite surprising because even the biggest city in Newfoundland, St. John's, isn't remotely urban in a modern, useful sense. It's by no means not a city. And I believe there's still I think about 200,000 people living there. Or maybe it's 160. It's somewhere in that range. So it's a serious, sizable, small city. Which might sound like a contradiction in terms, but there is a meaning there. But what is missing there is the turnout is abysmal, as I said. If we look here, the average turnout in Newfoundland is about 226, sorry, 223,000. This is a province that has about 460,000 registered voters, slash eligible voters. That means less than 40, or less than 50% turnout, roughly speaking, about 46%. On average. And that's actually even more tilted towards St. John's. St. John's has a more normal turnout, albeit still not great. Whereas rural Newfoundland has a terrible turnout. Possibly sometimes in the low 30s. And this is why Newfoundland itself is actually a bit of an interesting region. We see this on paper, it's so left-wing. That there is no conceivable potential for the Conservatives to gain here. It doesn't really make any sense to discuss this in the frame of reference of this series. In other locales and other regions I've already touched on. The key difference though, what I contend, is Newfoundland looks so left wing... Because right-of-center Canadians in Newfoundland, right-of-center Newfoundlanders, don't vote. In fact, if this was hitting something like a 70% turnout rate, I suspect these numbers might invert. Now, that leads an interesting question. Why is Newfoundland's turnout so abysmal for the right? Well, 
That's actually a pretty easy answer. Can you think in the last 20 years something that Ottawa conservatives have offered Newfoundland? Can you? Comment below if you have a single one that prior to this year, Ottawa conservatives have offered Newfoundland. The liberals offer Newfoundland things like dental care, albeit that's with the NDP, enhanced welfare benefits, stuff like this. This doesn't make Newfoundland left-wing. This means left-wing Newfoundlanders have a reason to vote. They are voting for something. They are getting something for their vote. Conversely, why would right of center Newfoundlanders really vote? What are they getting for it? They're getting ignored by the central government? They're experiencing the joy of the mismanagement that was the COD stocks? And yes, the COD mismanagement wasn't just the progressive conservatives in the 80s. But they were the ones who were in charge right before the collapse happened. So they could have prevented it, and they did not. So the only lasting legacy is, over the last 30 years, abject failure on managing the fisheries, which is a federal portfolio under a conservative government, and then after that, offering nothing? Maybe recently they've been more friendly towards Newfoundland's oil industry and trying to support that, but the liberals aren't anti-Newfoundland's oil. So, I don't think they're necessarily pro, but they're not against it. They approve oil projects in Newfoundland. So that's not really a radicalizing vote like it is in Alberta or Saskatchewan where oil expeditions or mining expeditions are vetoed by the feds. But that doesn't mean Newfoundland's a write-off. And you can kind of see here, there is some angling of gain in the last three cycles, or even just the last two. 34% here puts that, or what's around is 35. 35% puts this on the upper end of where the conservatives have done in Newfoundland. The only prior election, other than when they had two different parties garnering votes, was in 2006. Right before Harper really pissed off <laughs> Newfoundlanders. Once again. You did that several times. So there is capacity here for the conservatives to gain. This might seem more hawkish than other positions, other subregions, but I actually do stand by this. I think there is areas to gain here, and I think 2021 really showed a blueprint. It has to do with rural Newfoundland. And if we just zoom in here, so we have here is we have these three, one second here, we have these three of the core Newfoundland riding. So uh, Notre Dame, Coast Bays, um, one second, Bonavista, Burn, Trinity, and Long Range Mountains here. These are the three easiest ones for the conservatives to pick up right now. They have actually one. Uh, Coast Bay's Central Notre Dame, and they were very close in Bonavista, Burn, Tr Trinity, and Long Range Mountains in 2021. And unlike previous leaders, while I was actually giving some policy suggestions, such as uh, defending ceiling, that does play well in this part of Newfoundland. This is where most of the ceiling happens in Newfoundland. So, these ones are definitely capacity to pick up. And in fact, I would go so far as to say, now, I don't think they are safe. And I don't think they're guaranteed. But I'm putting them in a much darker color because the failure to get these three, I think, really shows that Wally's path to majority just isn't going to happen. It's so unlikely if those three fail that I don't think it's going, there is really much of a chance here. And for a similar reason, if we go look at Labrador, Labrador is very, very lightly 
Again, it's this lightest blue color. This means the conservatives would like to win this. But they don't have to win every, every one of these lightest blue colors. They only need to learn, win most of them. So they don't necessarily need to win Labrador. But their platform and their policy so far should play well enough in Labrador. And Labrador is such a small population. Such a small, relatively low turnout as is. That a good local candidate with their platform and a good get out the vote should be able to easily flip this. Again, by no means is this guaranteed, but it is definitely in play. Now, conversely, if you look at St. John's, on paper, St. John's should be a right-leaning area. Not necessarily staunchly right-wing, but it should lean right. It is a small city. Small cities usually lean right of center. Now, right of center in Canada still could be only like 37% conservative by vote share. Well, probably like 39-ish because I have them the conservatives at 36 in a bit right now. But <clears throat> in this context, though, in the context of Newfoundland, St. John's, well, I don't think it's a left-wing city, to be clear. I don't think St. John's is socialist i don't think saint john's is radical liberal i think saint john's the people in it are probably to the right on almost every issue compared to the people in say scarborough or core toronto but the difference is partisanship matters history matters and we're like understanding matters brand matters i don't think the conservatives will have an easy time flipping st john's i think it will happen eventually i don't think it's possible in this cycle if we see a poly of form a majority and that majority governs in a way that is beneficial to newfoundland I think maybe in one or two cycles after that, let's say 2033 at the latest, or at the earliest, St. John's might become a blue city again. It was in the 80s. It was in the 70s. It was a little bit in the 90s. But bad brand representation and bad argumentation has definitely pushed it away. And I think it will be very difficult to win it back anytime soon. And as a corollary to that, we have Avalon. This has a lot of parts that are suburbs of St. John's in it, but also some more rurally parts of Newfoundland as well. So I would say it's, you know what? I'm gonna go actually slightly redder on this one. It's a very light red. I think the conservatives could win it. It's definitely with impossibility, but even the best showing in 20, uh, to, let's say 2024 or 2025 would probably be a liberal win, but it's certainly possible. By no means should you discount it. Now, moving on to Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island, Prince Edward Island is actually one of the most uninteresting parts of Canada. It is very consistent. You look here, except for that one brief time in 2000 when you had two relatively strong right-wing parties. This just this province has basically never voted right of center. The only other time it came close was 2011, which, and if we all remember what I say about 2011 every single time, it's always going to be the worst showing for the liberals. It is their worst performance ever. So... If the only two good performances in PEI, 2011 and 2000, there's really not much hope here for the Conservatives to gain any meaningful number of seats. Now, part of this is the same problem in Newfoundland, where the Conservatives just really haven't argued for things that benefit PEI. They haven't sought out 
measures to help PEI. That's for sure. This is 100% a thing. But unlike Newfoundland, where Newfoundland has a terrible turnout rate, PEI's turnout's fantastic. We're talking like 76%. There isn't a lot of hidden voters hiding in the trees or hiding under the potato fields that are secretly right-wing but don't vote because they don't have any reason to vote. There's just not... There's not enough. Like, I guess, on the technicalist of terms, if they all came out and voted conservative, yes, the conservatives could win, if all the undecideds did. But do you really think a hundred, like 30,000 new voters are going to turn out in PEI? Get 115,000 voters? No. That's just silly. Now, this is not to say that there's no seats in PEI that are in play. But it is to say, there's really no gains here. Now, you could argue maybe some fishing policies or some farming policies or some other specific local issues that specifically help the economy in PEI might help the conservatives. But I don't really... The ones I'm seeing so far, I don't think are enough. I think Polyev is set to probably outperform O'Toole. But an outperformance of O'Toole might be one seat. Maybe two if he's really lucky. And again, I think this is something that is quite surprising. PEI is very rural. Very sparsely populated. Well, correction evenly populated it's actually quite dense for canada but whereas ontario or quebec or bc or alberta is very concentrated pei is very spread it's much more evenly distributed but pei has the curse of the for the conservatives perspective at least that the older population which makes up about i think 40 percent of the electorate is very liberal. Now, they're blue liberals, I would argue, but it doesn't really matter. They vote liberal. And once you get a certain age, I'm going to say about 50-ish, maybe 60-ish, if we're really pushing it, you really stop being a swing voter. You're pretty set in your partisan affiliation or your worldview. So the only reason you really change who you're voting for is if the party you last voted for is disappeared no longer exists or they really really alienate you and that doesn't really seem that likely now i think in our lifetime everyone watching this video based on the demographics of my channel i think you guys are probably going to shift very right wing at least much more right wing but for now it's not really in play i'm going to say there's probably one riding here, Malpeak, that the Conservatives probably should be able to win in a majority. Because, again, that's the prefix here. This is always considering a majority. But the rest of PEI? Nah. And if we go over to Egmont, there is a little tiny bit, but a little chance, but not much. That's really the best case scenario you're seeing in PEI. The eastern end of the island is pretty safe. The center is potential pickup in the west of the island is in play. Unlikely, but in play. Which is interesting because if you look at the last provincial election, that's the opposite. The eastern end of the island is the most safe for the provincial conservatives, and the western end is the least safe, which is kind of funny. Moving on to rural Nova Scotia. Now, Nova Scotia is big enough that it broke it into two. Huzzah. So, rural Nova Scotia has a very similar thing with Newfoundland. Turnout's not particularly high. It's not low, but it's not high. And in a lot of these cases, I think there is just a lack of effort to attract voters. Now, that is also to say that over the last 30 years, a lot of rural Nova Scotia has actually shifted 
noticeably to the right. That shift is already occurring. We just zoom in here for point of reference. In the early 90s, this part of Nova Scotia voted NDP provincially. Not entirely, not in every riding, but in many of the ridings. Now, this section of Nova Scotia only has one NDP provincial MP. Almost all of it votes progressive conservative. Now, people can and will quibble about how conservative Houston actually is, but that's not really the point. I think everyone, no matter how jaded or no matter how partisan, will agree with me in that Tim Houston is more right-wing than the NDP. And that is a trend that's happening in rural Nova Scotia already. Now, you saw a little bit of this in the 90s because the Reform Party and the PCs together were actually doing quite well. Then the parties merged because party merging always reduces vote share. Keep in mind that, Liberals and NDPers. Combine yourself, you're going to reduce your vote share. And 2008 and 2015 were bad elections for the same reasons that they were bad in Newfoundland for the Conservatives. But you look at 2011, this is a good election for the Conservatives. It's also a bad election for the Liberals and the NDP. Well, not the NDP, sorry, the Liberals. But it's a really good election for the Conservatives. And 2021 is an okay election for the Conservatives in rural Nova Scotia. And there's a lot of room to grow here. Both Cape Breton, Canso, and Sydney, Victoria are competitive ridings. Central Nova is definitely in play. Now, Son Fraser is a strong MP, but there is a very good capacity for him to lose, especially if they found a good local competitor. The Conservatives, that is. I would go so far as to say that in rural Nova Scotia, that what we're looking at here is really three types of ridings. So you have Cumberland... One second. So we have Cumberland, Colchester, and West Nova. Now, Cumberland, Colchester's always been a fairly conservative county, or two counties. Even in the early 90s, it was pretty much the core center of provincial conservatism and federally. It really only went liberal in uh, 2015 because our very popular local incumbent, Bill Casey, defected in 2011 to work from independent to liberal because he was angry about Harper's conservatives and how they were treating Nova Scotia before he was a conservative. In uh, 2008, he was conservative. But other than that, this is like the core center of provincial conservatism. If the, the conservatives federally fail to win Cumberland Colchester, that's more of an indictment on their campaign than anything else. They should win this riding. There's really no reason they should fail. Then we have West Nova. Now, West Nova historically has never been a conservative riding. It's been a very tossy turny riding, but now it's definitively firmly right of center. Will it stay that way for long? I don't really know, because the reason why it's so firmly right of center today is about the lobster fishery in 2021. But remember what I said about Newfoundland and branding? I think that ruined the brand for the liberals in lobster fishing county country. I don't know if it's going to ever come back. I could be wrong, by all means. But I would be very surprised. Especially because Chris Donchamal is a very popular incumbent. And then we have South Shore St. Margaret's, which I don't want to put as safe because a lot of uh, this part of the writing is like bedroom communities for Halifax. So they're very distinct from the rest of the uh, writing. But the same reason that West Nova became very conservative because of the lobster fisheries. This is the same deal. And again, I've 
I think I broke this down on Twitter, but a lot of the lobster fishery thing wasn't flipping liberal voters. It was turning out non-voters and turning them into voters. So those are the, that's the three core. If the conservatives fail to win those, that would be surprising. That would be a defeat, basically. And then we have a couple ones for pickup here. So we have... Cape Breton, Canso, and Sydney, Victoria. Both of these are, in a conservative majority world, win. Should be leaning conservative. They should have a chance to pick both up. Now, I don't think either of them are necessarily super solid. Sydney and Victoria might be slightly more edged for the conservatives, but it's still no guarantee. But both are definitely pickups. They could happen. Now, conversely, Central Nova, Central Nova, even though Picto County, right here, which is the biggest part of the riding, most that's like probably half the population of the riding, is extremely conservative provincially. Their incumbent MP is fairly popular from talking to people in the region. So I think he could theoretically ride out the boat unless the conservatives nominate a really popular local to run against him. So I, I don't think it's a potential pickup. It's possible. That's why it's pink. It could happen, but I would not count on it. Then we have uh, Hans or King County Hans. Yeah, King's Hans, sorry. Over here, this is more safely liberal. In fact, it might even be edging on red, or like the next shade of red here. Actually, I think I will, just for sake of argument here. This one is like, I think this is a very similar deal with PEI. And I think this writing will go the same way PEI goes as a whole, like the entire island of PEI. Because King's Hans is basically PEI, but in Nova Scotia this time. So, it's really, if you look at this and tried to average that, it's probably somewhere between this red color and this pinkish color. I don't really know which one I want to call it. We're going to call it red here. It's kind of the same deal. There's a lot of blue liberal types live in this writing. We don't, who aren't necessarily liberal because they're ideologically left-wing, they just don't trust the conservatives at all. They have zero confidence or trust in them. Voting conservative would be alien. Good outreach, good candidates, they could totally win it. The provincial conservative party swept the region almost entirely in 2021. So it's possible. But it doesn't seem very likely right now. I just don't really... A full sweep of, Atlantic, of uh, rural Nova Scotia would be quite shocking. Even saying that as a Nova Scotian, I would be very, very surprised. Then we have here Halifax. Now, Halifax is a city. And it's a sizable city at that. It's one of the, I want to say it's the 10th biggest city, or maybe it's the 9th. Or sorry, 11th. I don't know. It's up there in Canada. <clears throat> and it's a very city. It's a very, very city. I don't really think there's any writing here that the Conservatives have a good chance of picking up. They have one near, like, super edge case, which is Sackville, uh, Preston, Chesicook, Chesicook, pardon my pronunciation. But that's really very, very edge case. I don't really think it's very likely. Now, in the long term, I think this will shift slightly more favorable. I don't think it's ever going to be favorable. If we compare Halifax here to like a Kitchener or a London or a Niagara, I don't think it's ever, I think it's always going to be less favorable than these cities. The reason for that, I'll just minimize this, is Halifax is a bureaucratic center of obviously Nova Scotia. 
But it's also like the healthcare center of Atlantic Canada. It's kind of the de facto capital of Atlantic Canada. Whereas if you look at places like Kitchener or London or Niagara or Essex or Hamilton. Or, I don't know, like Saskatoon. These aren't bureaucratic centers. And bureaucrats, for various reasons, tend to vote liberal. Or maybe NDP. But they don't vote conservative. And then you have basically the concentration of all the healthcare resources, of all the level one or whatever healthcare centers in Atlantic Canada are more or less in Halifax. It's not impossible. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying the demographics in Halifax are very unfavorable for the conservatives to gain ground. I think you could probably gerrymander your way into conservative districts here. But I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Now, that said, I do think it is trending somewhat there, especially if you look at 2021. The Conservatives did pretty well once you factor in. Uh, they didn't run a candidate in Dartmouth Centre, which reduced their vote share by about nine, ten thousand 10,000-ish votes. So that would have put them above 2019 still. And once you factor in the PPC as well, I think you're starting to look in a pretty decent spot, trend-wise. But I don't think it's very likely. I don't think it's really going to happen anytime soon. And unlike the rest of Atlantic Canada, they don't have they don't have the justification or the scapegoat of it's old. The people here are old and the younger people are more right wing. No. No, it's not. I mean, Halifax is older probably than a lot of other cities in Canada. I could, I haven't, I haven't checked that yet. But the youth is also not left right wing. It's probably left of center of Canada as a whole. At least left of center of Nova Scotia as a whole. And you do have this kind of thing where the right wing people tend to leave cities and left wing people tend to migrate to cities. So I would be very surprised. In fact, I would go so far as to say something like this Sackville, Preston, Chesicook is a red, like this color it's an edge case maybe and the rest of these are deep red and pure liberal guaranteed the only possible one that could conceivably go elsewhere and this is only in an ideal vote split scenario would probably be like Halifax West and just barely I think you could theoretically get an, am an amazing vote split and the Conservatives could theoretically win with like 31% but the Conservatives getting to 31% in this riding I think that's going to be really hard I would go so far as to say it probably will never happen again at least if the parties are in their current form Next, we can move on to Anglo-New Brunswick. Now, New Brunswick is broken in it too because the Anglophone writings and the Francophone writings are different completely. Now, this language doesn't really map one-to-one -one with these writings, but this is the closest approximation. Now, Anglophone New Brunswick is a very right-wing area. As you can see here, the average is 52 to 47, or possibly 52 to 48 if you prefer that. That's right of center, for sure. In fact, this is substantially to the right of Canada as a whole. If you look at 2021, they got the PPC and Conservatives combined got nearly 50%, 49 and a half. Federally, they got 39. Anglo New Brunswick is 10 points to the right of Canada as a whole. That's pretty substantial. And I think it's probably going to go up, at least in the next election. It might not go much further up. I don't know if we're going to be getting rural Ontario or Saskatchewan or Alberta vibes here, but there is a lot of room to gain still. And there are some ridings to gain. 
So we really have two. Well, there's two colors here. So we have these four. And safe. Deep safe. The only reason the conservatives should lose these four writings in the most edge case one, actually, oh, you know what? For just sake of argument, I will just put this one slightly, I'll put this as a lighter blue. The only reason the conservatives should lose these four is bad local candidate, but they all have incumbents, so that's fine, or a bad campaign. They're rural, mostly Anglophone writings. Mary Machine Grand Lake has some Francophone population. So has a substantial Francophone population, but it's not. It's a minority of the writing. So it's slightly less safe. But all of these areas are very, very safe. It would be shocking if they lost them. And just to touch on it for people who might be curious, there is a, a lot of this language divide in New Brunswick seems to stem from the provincial side where the PCs provincially are generally speaking anti-bilingualism and the liberals are very very pro-bilingualism and this kind of filters up federally in party affiliation not one-to-one -one, not exactly but it's close enough and now the two here that are the interesting ones are st john's rossay and fredericton though in the end i think both of them in a conservative majority should be pickups. It would be surprising. Especially when you look at redistricting, actually. This redistricting really helps. <laughs> so, Anglo New Brunswick is solid. It would be surprising that a quality of government majority would not sweep it. It's just two to the right of the center of Canada as a whole. Now, conversely, we get Franco New Brunswick. It's the last region of Atlantic Canada. Franco New Brunswick is shockingly left wing. It's similar to Newfoundland in that it is Scarborough levels of left wing, Ottawa levels. But unlike those, it isn't bureaucratic, it isn't very urban, it isn't. The demographics don't line up. So, why is it like this? Well, it seems really just to be the language divide. The language partisanship has really pushed it like this. Now, I think there is the capacity for the conservatives to gain ground here. Uh, what's the name? Of, how to pronounce this? Uh, Madawaska Restigush, right here. That's potential. I think they could win that. It's not likely, but it's possible. Moncton Riverview Dieppe is also conceivable. Unlikely. I would not count on it. I would not bet on it. But it's possible. But Beaujajor and Acadie Bathurst? No. No. Those are almost completely out of play. For sake of argument here, I'll just color those two. For not sake of argument. For sake of coloring, I'll get those two in. So Beaujajor and Acadie Bathurst? Completely out of play. There's no capacity to win those any time in the future. It would really require a total collapse of the Liberals, pretty much. Now, Madawaska Rested Goosh has voted Conservative in the past, as has Moncton Riverview Dia. It's just not very likely. It only really happened in, I think, 2011, and I think we all know what happened in 2011. So, these ones, I will, I'll put them a little darker, or a little brighter. I think there is some capacity here. I just don't think it's happening. Now, I will say, just as a one final note, I think over the next 20, 30 years, the Francophone and Anglophone writings in New Brunswick will homogenize. Likely or largely because the youth is on the internet and the internet really, 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 really homogenizes areas. 
Because unlike TV, where you're going to watch, if you speak French, you're going to watch French TV. You speak English, you're going to watch English TV. Same with the radio. The internet's the internet. If you want to participate on Twitter or play video games or watch YouTube videos, most of those are in English. So I think a lot of the linguistic divide is going to ease. Will it completely go away? I don't think so. Probably not. But I think it will minimize. And I think that will probably be the benefit of the conservatives. Because a lot of these writings like Akadi Bathurst, Beaujajor, or Madawaska, Restadouche, Restagouche, on paper should be right wing. Just on a little demographics. Very rural, not super highly educated. And by that, I really mean they don't have university degrees. Um not really working in bureaucracies, etc. Usually religious, too. Like, these these are areas that should normally vote conservative, but they don't because of something polarizing like the linguistic divide. I think that you'll minimize, but I'm also thinking this might be 20, 30-year time scale. So come back to me in 2055 if this hasn't happened. I'll take the L. Well, that I bid you adieu, and I will see you next week, hopefully with a Canadian federal update, like a proper real one. Well, that, have a nice week.